So I've split the chain just here and I've attached a new chain with a bit of wire and I'm hoping that I can just feed this through. And I do, um, there's a bit of room at the side on, on the rear one anyway so you can get the chain off and slide it up on the flat spot. I'll do that now because it's a bit awkward. And then we'll just pull this bit of wire off. It's got chewed up a little bit around the bottom. Get a, cut the ends off. So there's the old chain. <coughs> then they've got big valves, haven't they? So, um, someone mentioned in the last video, well, the first video, about cylinder walls and what condition they're in. From what I can see, it looks in good, good condition, there's no big gouges, anything like that. So that's the side. I don't know if I'll get that the back. Cylinders are Front and back are going to take more wear than the than the uh, sides. This is sort of like a, an artifact for the reflection of that <coughs> of that piston crank. You can see the you can see the mirror effect. This is sort of like it looks like this. There's lines there, but that could be the horn marks, you know, going in this sort of direction. You can't feel anything at all. Uh, oh yeah. For that. Yeah, so I've took the thermostat out, heated it up. And I've seen it open and it's gone back to its original shape. So we, we know that this is okay. It hasn't, you know, the lady said that it got hot, but it only got hot due to the fans not coming on. So we're not talking about like an engine that's got so hot without any going into the radiator. At least the radiator was actually getting some of the heat away. So that's also a good thing to know that these work. These are expensive as well, about £50. So I don't think we need to spend any money on that. I've spent the money where it counts, which is the mechanics of it. So we've got rid of potentially 70,000 mile and stretched uh, cam chains due to the, you know, the manual cam chain tensioners. Um, so yeah, this is going to be ready to go back together now. So I'm just going to spend some time cleaning off all the old gasket, put the head gasket on. So that's the camshafts in now on the rear. Um, I've set the timing up and I'll just explain how you do that. So the front and rear have to be synchronized in the right you know, time basically. So the front cylinder, if that's at top dead center with an FT in the timed window. So that's uh, through that window there. Um, you should have FT and if you're working on the rear cylinder it, it changes so if you're doing the front cylinder you'd work you'd set the the rear up to top dead center vice versa so you set the front up top dead center in my case you set the front up at top dead center and then you look at where these markings are so you've got RI and RE which is on the back one um, if they're facing out, and it'll tell you in the service manual how many turns to turn the crank and in which direction. So in my case, it was anti-clockwise, three quarters of a turn, and then you get in the window, you get RT. I see it there. So that's RT, and then once that's set up. 
install the cams so you've got RI and RE and that's it that's how you synchronize the two of them so yeah it's it's quite simply put but it can be it can be messed up so you have to follow it quite quite um, accurately so what you want is the rear cylinder to fire compression stroke fire and then the front cylinder is on exhaust stroke and then the crank is turning again it'll go past this one which will be on the exhaust stroke now and then it will compress and fire the front one and that will give you about um, it's 450 degrees between rear to front and then once it goes round again it'll be like 270 I think for the next one or something but <clears throat> that gives you um, the right sequence of firing anyway so hopefully I haven't messed that up but if if it's not clear just look at the Honda Honda manual and it'll describe it perfectly for you so I've got the new chain on and I've got the tensioner in um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release the tensioner but I'll also point out that this is a new chain a new tensioner and I just wanted to show really what um, what amount I mean this this chain is quite tight without the tensioner even touching it you know so let me just get this in focus so that is me pushing on the chain guide there you can see there's not a lot of not a lot of movement there so let's pull out the uh, the lock on this and it should shoot out on me should I film the, the piston coming out I think I should try so there it is, just about. Might not be able to pull this out with my fingers because I can't quite grip it. Oh, there we go, got it. So that moved out. Um, can we see it? Yeah, so it's just crept out of that casting. Get the torch to light it up. So that's the bottom of the rubber. Um, so what I might try and do is count well I've got two options I'm gonna get this I'm gonna lock this up again and I'm gonna take it out and then we'll see how much it's traveled in uh, a brand new setup now obviously this hasn't been cranked over yet so there might be a little bit more to come but it's just a rough idea basically there we are so I've took the tensioner out so that one was put in and extended and this is the fully compressed so we're talking, you know, I'd probably guess that's like four millimeters it's extended by. So on a new setup, new chain, that's where you are.